Call the March 28th meeting of the Mill Creek Township Board of Supervisors to order, and we're going to begin with a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'll call for public comment on agenda items other than those dealing with development or rezoning applications. Okay, we have minutes from the meeting of March 14th. If there are no additions or corrections to those, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for the March 14th meeting. I'll second. Mr. Grow? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. And we have uh, bills for the last two weeks. If there are no additions or corrections to those, I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve the payment of the bills there for the last two weeks. I'll second. Mr. Grout? Vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. Next we have a public hearing on the consideration of a lease purchased by the Bell Valley Fire Department. Um, who has that? Well, I, I, I guess I do. Okay. Yeah, this is relative to uh, a lease that uh, Bell Valley is going to enter into. Uh, the purpose of the public hearing is to, do, is to declare the public use or public purpose of the uh, purchase so that it qualifies under the IRS regulations as a tax-free lease. That has to do with how they deal with these leases outside of uh, they get a better rate and they can sell the thing as a tax-free investment kind of thing. No, uh, there's no obligation. No to obligation. Absolutely that. none. No. Okay, just the fact that we need to uh, formalize the yeah. fact. Right. Okay, and it is for a piece of fire apparatus. Yeah, the, the tax code requires us to have the hearing, right. and and be able to state that we had a hearing on it. Okay. Do we need to have a resolution or anything like that declaring that it's a Do public need a purpose? Vote of any sort? Uh, that probably would hurt. Yeah, I think subsequent to the hearing, if there's anyone who. who cares to speak, then the supervisors would vote to approve, uh, you know, the uh, entering into the lease. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone from the public who wanted to address the uh, lease purchase of the Bell Valley, Bell Valley Fire Department's uh, apparatus? I'll entertain a motion from the board. Then. Just to clarify, this is a motion to approve the lease. This is the motion to verify that the purchase is for a public purpose. Correct, and it, it's to it authorize the execution of the documents necessary to enable them to proceed with the lease. In a tax-free uh, agreement. Correct. Okay. I'll make that motion to approve as stated. Second. Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. Okay, we have the uh, following land development and subdivision plans. The first is for Voices for Independence. This is a land development plan to show the addition of a 1,800 square foot storage building, a 1,800 square foot pavilion, and approximately 45 new parking spaces with associated walkways, public sidewalk, and stormwater management facilities located at the northwest corner of Wilkins Road and Middle Drive and Track 282. Mr. Morris. At their meeting March 7th, Planning Commission recommended approval with one condition, and that is that they provide an easement to the public for any public walk located outside of the public right of way. Okay. And I know that this was discussed at an executive session with the board and our solicitor. And Mark, do you want to kind of summarize your uh, opinion on this? Um, uh, request for a land development plan? Sure. A, a concern was raised regarding the fact that this property had received a, a variance uh, back in July, uh, I think it was July 13th of 2016 from the Zoning Hearing Board. <coughs> it was a, a use variance and a question was raised with respect to whether uh, the proposed land development was allowed under that under that variance that was granted. Um, I reviewed uh, the uh, adjudication from the Zoning Hearing Board and the applicable law and um, my recommendation uh, based on that review would be that uh, voices would need to go back to the Zoning Hearing Board to uh, 
ensure that the variance that they've been granted uh, would include uh, this land development that they're now proposing. Uh, the variance was granted in the adjudication only for a not-for-profit community resource center. Uh, and then the, the adjudication defined uh, community resource center specifically as a facility comprised of offices, classrooms, assembly areas, exercise areas, storage areas, and other areas of the building, and the equipment and facilities located therein, used solely by the administration and staff of the entity operating the center, the parties serviced by such center and other interested parties for education programs, training activities, and other support, which would advance the mission of uh, the said entity, all of which would be provided to or for the benefits of the clients of the said, en said entity. Nowhere in the adjudication does the uh, variance mention, uh, nor the definition of community resource center mention the addition or coverage of any additional buildings or facilities or any other physical changes to the property. Uh, in fact, in the adjudication, it indicates that the uh, applicant had represented that the external appearance of the building would remain essentially unchanged. Um, the, the applicant did not raise uh, before the Zoning Hearing Board any intention uh, to perform the land development activities that are presently before the supervisors. Uh, the, case, the applicable case law requires that a variance should be narrowly tailored uh, to cure the site-specific hardship, and as a result, a variance only grants uh, to, act, uh, to the act that is specifically authorized. Um, alterations to a use would require uh, further action by the Zoning Hearing Board. Uh, here, as I indicated, the specific use, use authorized by the variance uh, was used as a community resource center as that was specifically defined uh, by the uh, Zoning Hearing Board in its adjudication. Uh, the definition does not include the addition of the facilities that uh, are uh, requested here, and as a result of that, it's my opinion that based on the adjudication, this would not be a permitted use of the property under the zoning ordinance and that the applicant needs to go back to the zoning hearing board to have that board first determine whether this proposed land development plan would be uh, allowed. Okay, um, since this is a, uh, a hearing on the land development plan, if someone here, uh, if so, there's someone here who would like to speak <coughs> on behalf of the land development plan, we will hear that now and then I'll take comments from the board. Bill, if you want to come up. Bill McLeod, Corner Consulting Engineers. <clears throat> well, we, uh, in this process of developing this plan, we've had numerous meetings with the engineering and zoning department to, to develop the plan as you see it. And through that process, there's been no, no question to whether this plan fits in with the intent of that variance. In fact, the variance was discussed at those meetings. In this, you know, at this juncture, it's, it's just quite a hardship. Uh, I can understand, Bill, I can understand your and your client's frustration here. I think that this should have been um, caught by our um, engineering and zoning. Um, this isn't something that uh, I don't believe is a uh, uh, something out of the ordinary. Um, we do run across situations where someone who has developed property with a variance um, has come to a, a non-conforming use. Am I correct? This is a non-conforming use. Um, has come to the township looking to expand that non-conforming use, and they're unable to do that without first obtaining a variance to do so. Um, so this isn't something that uh, really is totally unique. Um, I think that this was originally caught about a week or so ago and we had our solicitor do some uh, research to see if in fact this would be the expansion of a non-conforming use and you just heard his opinion that yes it is. Um, so um, anybody can jump in here but uh, Mark what you're suggesting is that we really have a few options here. One is to simply deny the, the application because it's an expansion of, of a non-conforming use. Um, we could grant the application and make it conditional upon them obtaining the, the variance. That would be an option. 
Um, I don't know if that's a good option because it almost implies, I think it implies um, that we are, the Board of Supervisors is granting that, that um, uh, land development plan, is accepting that land development plan despite the fact that we don't know whether or not the Zoning Hearing Board is going to grant uh, the variance. Or we could simply table this until the, the variance um, is decided, whether or not there is a variance granted, which would require you to go back to the Zoning Hearing Board, but it would not require you to go back to the Planning Commission, um, go through that process. Um, it would come right back to the supervisors then um, if and when a, a uh, variance is granted. The, the only question on the table would be is the length of time. Obviously, there's a deadline in which supervisors must act after the Planning Commission reviews a plan, um, and whether you'd be able to fit in a zoning hearing board determination in that window, uh, it's probably close. So we, we, if, if we decide that tabling makes the most sense, uh, it probably, uh, we would probably need uh, a request from uh, voices to, uh, to do that and to waive the, the time limit uh, with respect to when the supervisors are required to, to rule on a, on a land development plan. Um, Margaret, I can't recall, there's one here where they meet the third Wednesday every month? I think they meet tomorrow night, I believe. The zoning hearing board does, yes. Yeah. yeah. So if they could get on the April's agenda for right. the zoning hearing board. I don't know what the window is for when they have to submit something. There that would, window may still be, be open. The agenda is what it would be. Was that right? Well, no, 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 it could be, the, no, I think it is going to be the May agenda, I think. We can find out first thing tomorrow morning, Bill, whether or not that, if that's the route that <coughs> um, you and your clients wish to take, yeah. um, about what the deadline would be. We will try to expedite that process if possible. I mean, um, the, the problem at the end of the day is because the Zoning Hearing Board defined that terms pretty specifically, it really ties our hands from, from that perspective. For thought processes. What constitutes the expansion? If we say we were just proposing the additional parking, does that constitute an expansion? <coughs> well, I, I mean, if, if I can chime in, Mark, I mean, I, I was in attendance at the Zoning Hearing Board, and I, um, I believe they made it clear in their, at that hearing, their intention was to re allow the use of the structure without further improvements to the property that would be expanding that use. Um, and as Mark said, there was no discussion by your client at that, at that hearing indicating that any intention of developing the property beyond reusing the existing structure. So 45 spaces is fairly significant. Well, it's, it's significant a number of those are utilizing existing pavement. It's a reconfiguration of the parking. <coughs> I didn't know if it was the parking or if it's the storage building well, as far as what's in front of us now, we have an 1,800 square foot storage building, an 1,800 square foot pavilion, right. and the additional parking. Okay. So that's um, that's significant. All right. And um, before that could be approved, what we're saying is the zoning hearing board is going to have to rule to see whether or not um, they would grant that type of a, of a variance. I don't know, one way or the other, whether they would or not. I could, I could just add that uh, fortunately, and this may sound hard to believe, fortunately it was caught now by us rather than have uh, a neighbor appeal this. And uh, as Mark Shaw would probably verify, and by no means am I a, a lawyer, I don't ever pretend to be one, uh, but a lot of case law is determined by nonconformities, and each one of them has uh, its own particular nuances. Uh, just keep in mind that the, if the board or the zoning office approves a permit, people have the right, neighboring affected property owners have the right to file an appeal to that approval. And, uh, you know, that could have happened. We don't know for sure. I mean, uh, this was something that we just happened to observe in the last week. And that's why we asked our solicitor for an opinion on that, who further researched that the zoning hearing board uh, did not specifically allow this. So therefore, it has to go back to the board. Uh, for that approval for whatever action they decide to take on it, so. Yeah. Mark, would you suggest that we request an extension now for the, for the time, or 
if we run into that case, we could act on, if, if we feel that we need additional time on top of the 90 days, um, see if the, uh, uh, if voices would be willing to then extend the period. We may not need additional time, it may be fine, 90 days may be enough. If we find that it's getting close, by the time it goes through the zoning hearing board and then back onto our agenda, uh, we may need to request. We, we could certainly table it for this evening and, and then reach back out to voices sometime either this week or next with a more definitive schedule to let us know whether it makes sense to you know, have them request the waiver or not um, and make that decision at that time. I don't know that we necessarily need to make that decision this evening. Okay. Um, we certainly aren't up against the time right limit now. at this moment, no. so we have some flexibility we'll to, get to the calendar out, work start out the schedule. and see what we need. schedule our, our lease expires in our current location September 30 so we we have a very limited window of time to get this work completed and um, you know when when we came before the 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 original body it was clear at least I know I I myself stated that we would need additional parking um, and I knew in fact when we went to the township they had requested originally that we have 130 spaces and we asked them permission to scale it backward and this was months ago that we did that and and so I guess I guess at this point I, I'm 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 at a little bit of a loss because everything we're doing to the property is for the service of the people that we are serving the pavilion is for our activities you know the storage facility is for us to be able to store a lawnmower <laughs> so that we can maintain the property and keep it um, in in good condition um, so I mean I'll do what I have to do but I'm very concerned about my time frame I can't stay where I'm at any longer than September 30 so is there a way we can we can well, you're, you're, the use of the buildings when approved by the zoning hearing board I understand that but I have I have 65 office staff that need to park their cars um, and that doesn't count the public that when I when I made my original presentation I said you know we have quarterly trainings of attendants that come into the building and and on a quarterly basis they're going to need to park their cars and and so you know that that's a real concern of mine is that we we still have a need for greater parking if nothing else we have a need for greater parking and you know I want to be able to maintain the property well so we are going to need to put equipment somewhere um, even if the pavilion is something that people don't want us to do the parking and the and the storage facility are definitely something we need just for the upkeep of the building I, I, I would think then that if that were the case and if you knew that months ago that that could or should have been part of your original request for a variance that you were going to tell the zoning hearing board that we're going to have to build a 1800 square foot building behind the existing school and add additional parking now maybe you mentioned the parking but we did 3600 square feet of additional construction is it's pretty significant um, especially if the neighbors who attended the original zoning hearing board meeting were not aware of that and now there's significant amount of construction that's going to be going on um, on that site well I am sorry I thought that I was pretty clear about that and I I don't I don't um, I'm sorry that no one else remembers that but I know that we specifically mentioned having a place to store like a lawnmower and our equipment in order to maintain the 
the property. I don't know that we mentioned the pavilion at that time, but um, I know that we mentioned the storage facility and parking. Again, it's referenced nowhere, unfortunately, in the adjudication, so that's really all we have to go by yeah. in terms of, of yeah. assessing whether this fits within that adjudication or not. And it may be that the Zoning Hearing Board will look at their record and say, yep, you're right, we knew this ahead of time, no problem, and then we're covered in terms of them saying it's an allowed use and you're covered moving forward. Or they may say, geez, we really didn't, you know, that wasn't an issue at the time and this concerns us for reasons A, B, and C, and maybe something gets worked out, I don't know. But, but from our perspective, the adjudication as it's written is such that um, the land development plan that, that you're proposing isn't, doesn't fit the four corners of that, and, and that's a problem in terms of our ability to approve it. When you, when you mentioned that you can help us expedite this, you know what my time frame is, and I need a place to be come September 30 and a place to put all my people. <laughs> so anything you can do to help me get to that date and get in would be much appreciated. We'll start looking at the calendar tomorrow and count the days and see what we need. John, you have a comment? Yeah, I just have a, a question and a comment <coughs> here too. Uh, I believe <coughs> that uh, if this goes to the Planning Commission in May, if, if I'm correct, zoning the, or the Zoning Hearing Board, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Zoning Hearing Board, uh, then it will come back to us and uh, that would be in June, I believe. And if we were to act on it and uh, you know approve it, if that were the case, I'm not sure, I'm only speculating here. Uh, I see Dan Schaff out there. Dan, I hate to put you on the spot. He is with BSI, the general contractor, and I've known Dan for many, many years. What type of time do you have on your Gantt chart regarding the construction of the utility building, 1,800 square foot utility building? How many days do you have you allowed for that? Sure, sure, sure. The uh, utility building wouldn't take that long to build, of course, but the parking would be the, the bigger right. job. Right, you have, so you have your, your stormwater drainage, drainage, and drainage right. yes. Okay. That would be where the bigger And that could be going on no matter what, I believe. If really. it was approved. If it were approved, mm -hmm. okay. And, uh, okay. So you're looking at start? underground stormwater? Yes. Okay. So I didn't mean to put you on the spot there, Dan, but I, you know, I, I know that you guys do good work and you do it fast, too. Yes. And um, so it, it can be done. It's just a matter of a slight delay in this, uh, Mrs. Deacon. And uh, as I said, fortunately, we were able to find this now rather than have this come up under appeal mm -hmm. by somebody who uh, felt that the permit was issued in error. And, uh, Thank that's, you. That's not fun when that happens. So. I don't want to be there. Not, neither do we. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I, I would move that we, uh, we we table this item. I'll second that motion to table. All right, uh, Mr. Grow. I vote yes. Mr. Morgan. I vote yes. And I'll vote yes. And uh, Bill, if you want to get a hold of us tomorrow, we'll figure out what we need to do. All right. Okay, next we have Transportation Investment Group LP. This is a small subdivision plan to show the reconfiguration of three existing properties into three new parcels, a 6.07 acre parcel A, a 4.33 acre parcel B, and a 5.17 acre, par acre residue parcel, the parcels A and B splitting 50 feet of frontage along West 17th Street located at the southwest corner of West 17th Street and Harper Drive in tracks 14 and 17. Rick? Planning Commission recommended approval. However, ordinance do require 50 feet of frontage on a public right-of-way, and only 25 feet, as you mentioned, is available for both parcels. Okay, so I'm going to speak on behalf of the small subdivision plan. Good evening, John Laird, David Laird Associates. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Mr. Bonacci and Transportation Investment Group. Uh, the plan that you see before you uh, came before the supervisors back in January as a sketch plan. Um, at that point in time, uh, the supervisors had mentioned the possibility of dedicating the roadway and getting some costs together from the engineering department in order to make those improvements to the roadway and, and, and dedicate it as a public street. Uh, Mr. Morris was kind enough to provide those numbers uh, to us, um, 
and those numbers uh, were going to be in excess of $100,000 to bring the current uh, road up to township specifications for dedication. Um, I also, uh, Mr. Morris also reached out and also gave us two other options uh, that, uh, that might be available for the piece of property uh, to offer, continue to do, perform, proceed with the subdivision and continue to operate as it is. Uh, those two options were to not use the existing roadway at all and just provide cross easements in between the properties that Mr. Bonacci owns that are shown on the plan. And the second option was to enter into a maintenance agreement uh, with the township for the maintenance of that road, of which Mr. Bonacci would be responsible uh, for 50% of the shared costs for the future maintenance of that road. Uh, I did share those recommendations or those uh, items with Mr. Bonacci uh, to see if any of those would be feasible uh, for the situation that he's currently in. In doing so, um, Mr. Bonacci let me know that you know the roadway that's there now, he has already contributed uh, in excess of $100,000 to get the roadway up to the existing grade where it's at before the township <coughs> came through and paved it. And he has been using that driveway since the 70s uh, to operate that business. Um, so uh, I asked him, you know, what, what effect those would have on his operation. He said that he absolutely would have to have access through that to continue operating uh, the building that's farthest to the north, uh, uh, northwest actually, because of the way the current truck flow works. Um, and so that would be option three. Uh, and for option two, uh, that would not work for him because of his agreements and the current traffic associated with the operation of the FedEx facility uh, at the rear of the property. So uh, we're here today presenting the plan uh, and asking the supervisors to consider granting this subdivision uh, as the property, um, would, uh, two properties would have 25 feet of road frontage. The operation of the facilities would operate as it currently operates with really no change. Um, and we're asking for your consideration in that tonight. Uh, and we're hopeful that you'll uh, consider bringing it. I'll be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Okay, so the cross easement thought with no access to 17th Street, that doesn't work because the trucks have to have circulation out of the 17th Street. On the 17th Street and also the interruption with the FedEx. Or not 17th Street, but the township's driveway, the extension of 17th Street. Correct. Okay, um, improving the driveway to make it public, that's a big number. It's a big number and, and Mr. Bonacci has an agreement with the business owner that he has sold his business to for the purchase of the building and uh, cannot go back now and change that agreement to pass along those costs the deal would fall through. Okay, um, and Rick, what kind of condition is that uh, driveway right now? I believe it's in good condition. Um, the township paved it, but it was many years ago, several years ago. Yes, right about maybe 10. probably 2000, 2001. Okay, so yeah, 15 years ago or so. Yes. Um, and it remains in good condition, so there must be a pretty decent base in there because it gets a lot of truck traffic. Yes. Yes. Okay. Our concern is that the fact that it does get a lot of truck traffic. Um, and it will continue to do so because that's a trucking company and there's going to be a lot of trucks there. Um, so our concern is that if traffic continues, truck traffic continues to use what amounts to the township's driveway, um, at some point there's going to be the need to um, fix that driveway. Understood. And um, it would then be at tax sold solely at the taxpayer's expense to fix the driveway that is being utilized by private truck traffic. Now granted there'll be, we're hoping that there'll be additional traffic, <coughs> township traffic going back through there, back to what was the driving range of the golf course, uh, mm -hmm. but that would be minimal compared to the, the semi-traffic I would imagine as far as what kind of damage would be, would be done. Um, Rick, we're not uh, Okay, let's just say that the public road idea is maybe not necessary and or it, it's uh, significantly more than what the 
uh, property owners willing to come up with because it just isn't financially feasible. All right, let's just take okay. that. However, and I know that um, uh, Mr. Bonacci would like to <coughs> sell this property and, and uh, doesn't want to have an ongoing, um, some kind of a, uh, what would you call it, uh, an agreement with the township that would require future payments from future owners. Um, would it be possible, Rick, to come up with some kind of a number for, let's just say the township had to repave that in 10 years, what it would cost to put a new, new top on that in 10 years? Sure. If we look at milling and resurfacing, that is somewhat different than total reconstruction. Total rebuild. Because you were talking about storm sewers, you were talking about under drains, under drains right. base, and then the, the wearing course and the whole. Right. Well, I, th I believe the estimate only included pavement. It did not include drainage. Did not include drainage. Correct. Okay. How long is that stretch, Rick? Uh, hold on. I have some information here. It's about 440. Yeah, I can see that there. 440 yeah. some feet. Actually, I guess that's 25. So 420. 420. And it, I don't know if you've been down there recently to see it, but that road stretch of road is the nicest stretch of road in that whole. It's, it's in good shape. Area. Yes. Well, I, I guess the, the the concern I have is is as you mentioned, you this was brought before the board in January for discussion and. Um, Unless I'm mistaken, we, we haven't heard back about any other alternatives your client might propose to kind of solve this problem we're, we're in. Um, is, is there any point in us tabling this for further discussion? I, I understand we have until June 5th to act on it. Um, but if, if, there's, if there's no acceptable uh, compromise your client's willing to negotiate with us or any, any other ideas outside of the options we presented, I mean, as it stands right now, we, we have grounds to deny the subdivision per the saldo. And we're trying to just figure out a way to justify a variance for your client. Understood. We've thrown three options out, and I don't know if there's another alternative. I mean, I'll be happy to move the table this rather than, than deny it, and we can have discussions maybe later this week and see if we can't figure something out. Mr. Minacci, speak to that. Well, first of all, I, I feel that we we pay enough taxes. We have six properties in Milford Township, and, and we're in the six figures as, as far as our taxes are concerned. I would expect that the township should have to maintain that road. I shouldn't have to pay any. I We use it. Scott Stewart uses it. He has the same amount of frontage that we have. He's not being asked to participate in maintenance of the road. Uh, we've been using that road since we put it in. And John said $100,000. It was closer to $200,000. When was that, sir? That was approximately, it was in the 80s. And, <clears throat> you know, we put the road in. I don't know why there's a problem now because you know, it's been working. We have two driveways. It's been working well. Uh, FedEx, the people there, certain times of the day, there's cars going in and out of that from Harper Drive right straight through FedEx. To put truck traffic on that road is going to be a disaster. I mean, everything works fine now. <coughs> There was never any problems in the last 30 some years there. Uh, now that we want to subdivide it, and I, and I explained before the reason for subdividing it is I sold the trucking company. They want to buy the building. Now, I can't put a driveway off of the road to FedEx because I had to make an agreement with FedEx to keep our truck traffic off of that road because there's so many cars going in certain times of the day. I mean, and it's also the time of the day, which is normally the FedEx, there's cars going in and out between five and seven at night. Uh, it's also 
our busiest times when our trucks are coming in also. So I mean it would be it would be a actually it would, it would just be a nightmare traffic wise. Now the way it is right now it works fine. And the only reason I wanted subdivided was because of the fact that I sold the trucking company <coughs> and they want to buy the facility. They want to buy the truck terminal. So they've basically given me an ultimatum. The people that bought the trucking company have two investors that are from Northeast. They have land out there. They said if we can't get the subdivision done, they'll build a terminal out in Northeast, which naturally I don't want to happen. There aren't a lot of trucking companies looking for terminals in your EPA today. So it's, it's a situation where nothing is really going to change other than the fact that it's going to be two parcels and be two taxes. And it's not going to be, the, the operation is going to be the same tomorrow as it is today. Everything's working fine. The road's <coughs> held up well. I mean, it's really better than the rest of it. 17th Street over to Minnesota Drive. Like I say, we're not the only ones that use that road. You well, I, I do have to say, Mr. Rodacci, that, that um, prior to the townships uh, paving that, and we paved it when the golf course opened, or yeah. shortly before, I guess, um, that road wasn't in very good shape. Uh, yes, it has a good solid base to it, but um, it wasn't... Uh, conducive to having public drive back through there to get to well, the it golf was, course. It was dusty, basically. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't. It was, it was rough, and it was, yes, and it was dusty. Mm -hmm. uh, but the township, uh, um, you know, put the, put the asphalt down uh, because it's the township's driveway. And I think that that probably helped with uh, the condition that the road is currently in because it not, not only is there a good base, <coughs> but now there's a good asphalt surface on it, too. Um, so I think that that did uh, help the cause. Our concern is that since it is not a public street to at some point in the future require the township to um, again go in there and pave it, the reason that we may have to pave it is because of the truck traffic. It's going to be very limited damage because of the cars that are going back through there. It's going to be because of the trucks. So we have to look out for the taxpayers as far as future maintenance goes. It may not be for 10 years or it, it may be uh, two years from now, but uh, we have to look out for the taxpayers as far as how much we may be spending in the future to bring that portion of township property back up to the condition that it's in now. So it's, it's my calculations We've got a couple engineers sitting out here. It's eight tenths of a mile. I think we have to look at how much it would cost um, the taxpayers to repair eight tenths of a mile if and when that day comes, and then get back to you with a number. Excuse me, it wouldn't quite be eight tenths of a mile. Maybe I'm sorry. Less. It's a, it's a eight hundredths of a mile. There you I'm go. sorry. There it's there less than a tenth of a mile. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I had the numbers right here. I was reading it wrong. Hey, sure. <coughs> it's, uh, it's eight hundredths of a mile. It's it's uh, um, a pretty insignificant, sure. I think, number. Cheryl, our next meeting is April eleventh, right? Uh, Mr. Bonacci, I, I'd, I'd like to move to to table this to our next meeting, and maybe we can have some more discussions with you to try and figure out uh, a way to solve this in the next <coughs> few weeks. So that. There might be other options for us to look into. No, I, I, don't, I don't believe that we should have to do anything to be truthful. I mean, we pay taxes, we're entitled to the road. Well, you're, you're, you're not, sir. That's what I'm saying. Is it's, it's, not, it's not a public right of way. It, it's, it's a driveway to, to the municipality. And I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how you were permitted access to begin with. I, I don't have a record of that in front of me. I, I'm, I'm not trying to, to argue with you, sir. But we, we've got an opportunity here, maybe try and, and clean it up a little bit. And I'm, I'm just asking, maybe we can work with you in the next week or two before our next meeting and, and see if we can't figure. It seems like there was a bit of a gray area back in the 70s and 80s for how this got set up. And 
we're just trying to formalize something now. Um, not, not trying to give you a hard time, not, not trying to make you pay for you know, past sins of previous boards, but maybe we can work something out is all, is all I'm saying. And I'm, I'm sure there's some kind of compromise we can come up with that won't be too arduous for you. Are you acceptable then to um, having us table this? We'll get together with the engineers and see if we can come up with uh, something that's acceptable to both parties. I'd like to meet this week if possible because I won't be here sure. next week. Yeah. Um, the sooner the better. I'm sure you would like it the sooner the better. Friday, I'd like to yeah. hear what you have to say, Mr. Brown. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you'd, if you'd like to coordinate Mr. Morris and schedule a meeting sure. this week, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty open this week as well. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I move to uh, table this issue until the April 11th meeting. Okay. I will second it there. Thank you, Mr. Bonacci. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, since this is a land development plan, it is on the uh, uh, agenda. Is there anyone else who would like to address this? I apologize. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Groh? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Okay. See you, John. Okay. Next we have, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Jonathan and Jennifer Coyne. This is a small subdivision plan to show the creation of a 14.643 acre parcel B and a 15.468 <coughs> acre parcel residue parcel located along the north line of Arbuckle Road, east of Footmill Road, in Track 340. Mr. Morris. Planning Commission recommended approval. Someone here to speak on behalf of the small subdivision. Good evening, Mike Sanford, 4721 Atlantic Avenue, here on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Coyne. And it's just, essentially it's a subdivision taking one tax lot mm -hmm. into two. Okay. And all the frontages are acceptable, Rick? Yes. Okay. They exceed the required. So we don't need to table this one? <laughs> We're good. Any questions from the board? Not for me, I think. All right. Anyone else to speak either on behalf or in favor of or opposed to the subdivision plan? I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve that subdivision as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Groh? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Next we have a small subdivision plan, uh, lands of Julie L. Muse. Uh, plan to show the creation of a 3,000 square foot parcel that will become an integral part of Erie County Tax Parcel 33 6-26-6.01 located along the south line of Argyle Avenue east of Clinton Drive 
in track nine. Rick? Planning Commission recommended approval and noted one requirement, and that is <coughs> that the 3,000 square foot parcel is to become an integral part of the neighboring parcel. Okay, someone to speak on behalf of the subdivision plan. If we could have your name and address, please. I'm Julie Mews, 3411 on Guy Avenue. And I'm Pete Scandalbury, 3417, so we live right next door. Okay. <clears throat> so essentially, there's an L shaped property that Julie has. So what we're going to do is just buy it from her and turn it into two rectangular properties. So. Sounds logical. Yes. Yep. We like square lines. Mr. Yeah, Lines. Mr. Shaw, you, you had an issue you want to make sure you get clarified. Yeah, it, it, we've had a, an issue come up recently with respect to these types of subdivisions, and, and um, I, I guess I would just caution if there's a mortgage on either the properties, okay, that solves that issue. Okay, any questions from the board? None for me. Anyone else to speak either on behalf of or in opposition to the subdivision? Don, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve. I'll second that motion. Mr. Groh? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we have a land development plan. This is for Bonnell's Collision. A land development plan to show a proposed 2,972 square foot building addition with associated public sidewalk and stormwater management facilities located at the northeast corner of West 26th Street and Evanston Avenue and Track 13. Mr. Morris. Planning Commission recommended approval. There are two items that I'd like to bring to your attention. One is that the applicant received an adjudication from the ZHB Zoning Hearing Board dated November 18th of 2016 that allowed for an extension of an existing non-conforming structure and granted permission to extend the existing non-conforming planning strip. Number two is that a modification is required for the two-foot green strip fronting Evanston Avenue. Ten feet is required. And that two feet is located between the two driveways on Evanston. Okay, and you mentioned the sidewalk, Rick? Yes, that's a requirement that the sidewalk be constructed to the property line. And that's one thing that we typically cover in the decision letter. Okay, and the sidewalk would be in, in uh, the right-of-way? Yes, Okay. in the Evanston right-of-way, yes. Okay. Take it away. Uh, Mike Sanford, 4721 Atlantic Avenue. Uh, Mr. Bonnell is um, out of the country right now, so I'm here on his behalf to represent his project and try and answer your questions. As Mr. Moore said, uh, back in November, there were variances created for the project by the Zoning Hearing Board, and this plan's uh, consistent with those uh, variances. Um, also, just for your own knowledge, Bonnell has been there for quite some time, and in 2015, about two years ago, he bought an additional property on the east side of his, um, his, his land to just expand you know, his, his property. He has a successful business, you know, just needed a little more land, so he got some on the east end. That was about two years ago. Uh, he then uh, recently, prior to submission of the land development plan, he did consolidate the properties together. He had three tax lots. Uh, he did consolidate those together. Um, as presented, uh, he's, he's a vehicle body shop. I'm sure you, you know that, and so he you know, uh, repairs vehicles. Uh, the, the ordinance does require a certain number of off-street parking spaces. We do on our plan demonstrate how many are required and how many are required. Um, one of the things he's doing with his building expansion, he's expanding his building to the west, about just under 50 feet uh, on the west side there. And one of the things he's doing while expanding the building is he's relocating his parts department that's inside the building. Uh, currently, it's kind of in the middle, maybe a little east of center, where his parts department is. He's going to, uh, with his new building addition, put the parts department on the extreme western side. And the reason I'm explaining that is, is that affects how the traffic flow is within his operation. 
right now, when the parts delivery vehicle comes, they have to back in that whole north driveway, the whole way down, to deliver the parts into the building. And so that, that, that affects his ability to park cars on the north side. Relocating the parts department to the extreme west side, now that delivery truck can come off of Evanston, deliver the parts, and doesn't have to go down that whole north side. The reason I'm explaining that all is that enables him to park on the north side that he's currently not doing. As I know, there, there is some concern about parking or perceived concern about parking, irrespective of compliance with the ordinance, I'm just trying to explain how we can park. And so the relocation of the parts department is one aspect of that's going to improve his parkability, at least on the north side. And we do show those parking spaces on the plan. The one you're speaking of those. How many parking spaces does he currently have? Uh, I don't know that I've counted. Um, I don't. I don't know specifically. Um, well, I only ask that because it really is more more than just a perceived problem. We have documented parking problems in I went area. by today, as a matter of fact, and there's cars parked. What would be, if the sidewalk were there, they would be parked out over the sidewalk on, on Evanston. A lot of cars. Right, but they're not on the street. That's, uh, no. I guess when, when I say perceived problem, it's not like they're parking in front of neighboring properties. They're, they're also not allowed on the sidewalk, though. Yeah. I'm sorry? So they're also not allowed on the sidewalk, though, and we, we get those calls all the time. Right, there is not a sidewalk there now, but there will be after development, mm -hmm. and he will not park on the sidewalk. And that's one of the other things I wanted to talk about is um, right now his access on Evanston is just free flow. He has an enormous wide curb cut. And one of the things we talked to the township about in our pre-development pre meeting was defining those driveways. So we're taking one enormous large curb cut, defining it into two driveways by virtue of the green strip and the sidewalk. So yes, he will not park on the sidewalk because it'll be a sidewalk. And the reduction of the green strip from 10 to 2, although it's a reduction from 10, modification from 10 to 2, it at least provides some definition. And that two feet is actually on private property that's outside the right of way. There's still going to be green space inside the right of way as well to further define the distance, the, the separation between the two driveways. How so big is that, Mike? I would estimate probably <coughs> 9, 10 feet in the right of way. In addition to the two, so you're going to end up with a ten or right, and space. that's what's going to designate the two entrances. That's correct. Okay. Right. So, again, I try. I say this from time to time. People driving down the street don't know where the right-of-way line is. All they see is a green space and the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. they, they don't understand. Oh, that's on public public property. That's on private. There's at least a, a, a separation and delineation between the two types. Um. It's also important to note, yes, he's doing a building addition, but those cars you see there, the purpose of the addition is that they actually go inside the building to start the repair process. And that's this building addition, about 50 feet. Part of it is parts department, but that'll free up other square footage in the building to put cars for repair. But then the balance of the building addition is what he calls pre-op, where a car's initially gonna come in and it's gonna be evaluated start the repair process, and there's actually going to be an overhead door on the south side and the north side. So the vehicles can drive through the building, they'll be parking within the building. So those, some of those cars you see there are actually going to be inside the building now, starting the repair process. So it's not like this is an office addition and those cars can't be undercover. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, I, you, know, you were a very good presentation here. Do you have a plan indicating that, showing what, just what you're saying? Can you submit a plan to us? Or? It's, it's on the uh, building, uh, okay. the BIU plans. It's, oh, the BIU, okay, we don't have those in front of us here. Though. Yeah, the architects don't yeah, have I don't have them here, but I only have the outline of the building. That's all I have. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, the architect has a plan. And so okay, it is, yeah, uh, Gary Matzak was the architect on yes. this? Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, you have no plans for the property that was purchased, um, what would be north no that lot? And, and also, uh, just to further the, the, the parking, because that's what I want to focus on, is obviously in the car repair business, there's busy seasons and not busy seasons. You know, when there's um, you know, high accidents, that's when the cars get dropped off. You know, certainly cars are going to get dropped off over the weekend. That happens. 
yeah. but Mr. Bonnell has a property in Fairview, his other Bonnell collision. <laughs> so for the last year, year and a half, he does shuttle vehicles from this location to that location. So if you're a Mill Creek resident, you drop your vehicle off here, you know, and if he has an issue, parking problem, he takes the vehicles out to Fairview, where they have more land. They, they repair them out there, but they bring them back to Mill Creek, so you can pick your vehicle up here, you don't have to go out there. So he already has self-imposed the shuttle thing. That's, that's simply to handle when he has a lot of vehicles there. Um, then I just wanted you to know that, I didn't know, I didn't know that, so I asked him. Well, I knew he had a facility in Fairview. I just didn't know. I didn't yeah, know about the yeah, they do, they, transfer. They, again, he bought some extra property, gave him some more opportunity to go on the east. He does the shuttle thing to move the vehicles around. Again, that's during periods when he needs it. And this building addition also will house, house cars under cover to start the repair process. Okay. Um, and as just a few <coughs> things I can like answer your questions. Um, Rick did mention the modification of the green space. We kind of we kind of touched on that a little bit. And then also, um, right now, there's essentially no stormwater down there. I mean, this was built prior to stormwater, and it's almost all impervious. So uh, we submitted a plan to the township uh, with the compliance with the ordinance, 50% uh, rule, and we've given those calculations to the township that we will certainly handle anything that we develop, uh, disturb, it will be uh, certainly managed within accordance with the stormwater rule. We did do some infiltration testing and infiltrates very well. It's uh, very sandy gravel down there, which is to be expected on Western River. So, are you going to answer any other questions you may have? Uh, Rick, what about the sidewalk? Should that go to the corner? Yes. Well, it should go to the uh, south property line, yes. Is there any reason why that wasn't shown correctly, Mike? Right here. I see it goes to the north property line. And I can show it there, the grade goes up excessively, so it's going to exceed the 5% longitudinal slope per ADA, but there is provision under ProWeg that you can, as long as you follow the road grade, you can do that, so as long as everyone knows it will exceed 5% longitudinal, but there is, like I said, an exception. Um, so I, I can certainly extend it to, to the north right away line. Of Evanston comes up pretty steeply there, right, to 26. Correct, so we kind of stopped it, and, and arguably we stopped it short of that steep incline. And, and uh, he is correct under the ADA. He's, you know, under the PROAG, which is what we follow here in the township. He's the sidewalk uh, running slope is allowed to match the running slope of the road. Well, we really don't need to even mention that because it's required. Correct, Rick? That's correct. Okay. So it's, that wouldn't necessarily be a condition. It's a requirement, anyways. Well, we. It should be shown in the drawing. Okay. Well, well I mean, we we don't we don't want to approve this plan without I'll, it being shown on right. this plan. Okay. I, gotcha. I, I believe w w what the uh, difference is here is that's a requirement that we typically take care of in the letter form, and as Brian is speaking, we really don't have to cover it in the meeting because that is a requirement that must be completed. Well, we can mention it that we sure. want it shown on the drawing, sure. and we'll show it on the drawing. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? I know a few months ago when this matter came before us, whether or not it needed to have any land development approval. Uh, I'm sorry, I might, I'm coughing a lot. That's why I turned my microphone off. Uh, I know a few months ago when this matter came before the, before us to determine if it needed to go before land development uh, review, uh, the I made a comment, you know, that you know, here's a successful businessman, and we can see how successful he's become, and he's. Uh, not to be pulling a plug for the guy, but you know, obviously, you know, his business is doing that good, and uh, I just wonder. And I hope this doesn't happen, but he's going to get to a point where this isn't going to be big enough for him. You know, if his business continues continues to expand the way it is, and who knows what the future holds. You know, so uh, that's not a cautionary statement; it's just an observation. Is what it is. Right. So, he, he loves the location in Mill Creek. Yeah. We and we love that. having him here too in Mill Creek. You know. Right. So, yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Any other comments? Anyone else to speak either on behalf of or in opposition to the land development plan? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I, I, I move to uh, approve the land development plan with the uh, 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 with the uh, amendment as we noted for extending the sidewalk to the property line. And we need a modification for the green space, correct? Correct. That's correct. Okay. I'll second that with those conditions on that. Yeah. 
Mr. Grow? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. Okay, we have the announcement of bids and quotations received. The first is for the township's email system, request from the IT department. Which one of you gentlemen has that? Uh, I think that's Mr. Grow. I think I have Got it. That? Hopefully I can struggle through this here. Give me a second. Uh, Wants to handle it? Could you do that? I'm probably going to start cracking as I'm talking, so. Mark, you're probably more familiar. Are you more familiar with this? I'm. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. Go ahead. I can try. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, as on all software, uh, it reaches an end of its useful life. It no longer gets supported. And uh, there's, this is two pieces. One is the actual server software that um, handles all the network traffic within the building. <laughs> Uh, it's no longer being supported by Microsoft, so we need to upgrade from server 2003 to server 2012. Now that's, and they're going to 12 because one, there are other compatibility issues a lot of times with other softwares. There may be a, uh, a newer software server than 2012, but what we have currently will only consistently run on 2012. And I'll be running, you can see that we're running on three, uh, and this is 17, so 14 years. So maybe in 2026 we'll be uh, dealing with this again, but uh, it's down the road. Mm -hmm. um, same thing true with the, uh, okay, there's two sets of server software here. The email has its own server, which is called an exchange server. Same kind of concept. It, Net moves all the traffic for the emails uh, within the building, outside the building, and uh, it reaches an end of life. And so therefore, um, they need to replace it because uh, it's gonna come to a point where uh, we lose security, uh, it'll crash, it won't be recoverable. There's all kinds of issues that will happen as you can continue down the road. Also too, it prevents you from further upgrading uh, other supporting software. So these two are, are absolutely required uh, to be done. They were also in their capital budget, so I should also mention that. So uh, uh, they did the three uh, quotes as uh, required, and I believe they are recommending Okay, actually, I think they, uh, although they did uh, uh, quote it out, they, they're actually picking and choosing. Mm -hmm. So they're getting the software from uh, government, government Connection for 92.08.75. Uh, the services for actually uh, installing and uh, moving the data from the old server to the new server from uh, VelocityNet for 42.75. Uh, archiving services, which means backing up everything and, and uh, storing it once again from VelocityNet for $6,300. And a uh, three year SSL that has to do with the security um, uh, software verification when that HTTPS, that's the S part, uh, from VelocityNet for $99. So the total project is $19,082.75. And their budget was twenty-two thousand, so they're in under budget. All right. Thank you, Mark. Any questions from the board? No. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve that purchase of those items as presented. Okay. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Grove. Vote oh, yes. Mr. Morgan. I vote yes. I vote yes. Uh, three new computers and video cards, also from the IT department. Okay. Uh, let's see here. This comes from the IT department from Chris Filson. <coughs> Save your breath. Okay. Okay. Um, looking. It's, 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 it's a co-stars. Oh, this is all on CoStars? It's that makes life a lot yes. easier. Yeah, it's a quote from CoStars. 
and this is in the uh, 2017 budget. Yeah. Uh, it would be for three of the uh, Lenovo systems at a price of $595 each for a total of $1,785. Yes. Um, and three video cards. Video cards. Uh, Vision Tech at a cost of $174 each for a total of $572. Uh, that is a grand total of $2,307. Again, um, on the uh, co-stars, and this is from uh, Connection. And I would move approval of that purchase, and that is in the budget. Okay, I'll second that. Uh, Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. <sighs> Okay, we have two uh, amendments, uh, two ordinances uh, being advertised. This is for action that was taken, when was this, uh, two weeks ago? Yes, yeah, so our last meeting there were uh, two zoning uh, ordinance amendments uh, uh, approved from the perspective of, of zoning changes. Uh, so we have advertised the revision, the actual revision of the ordinance to reflect uh, those changes so that they'll, they'll be reflected on the zoning map. So those advertisements will go out, and, and um, I don't know if it's the next, they'll go out tomorrow, and I think either the next meeting or the meeting after. So we would actually vote on those ordinances those. after the event. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Next we have resolution 2017-R14. This is resolution pursuant to resolution 2015-R20 and the municipal records manual to approve proposed disposition of certain township records, and there is a very large list here. Uh, records that have gone, uh, have been uh, recommended for disposal from accounts payable. I think there's a lot from the police department in here, is there, Mark? Uh, well, there's that whole bunch Videos. of- Videos. Yeah, uh, and there's a whole bunch of uh, stuff from the, the uh, vault, which is being cleared out. I mean, some of the records go back to the 80s. Okay, and we are going through these records individually, actually. Yes. To make sure that, um, there is nothing historic that needs to be preserved. They are uh, more or less day-to-day uh, -day business that we really don't need. Any and, and some are duplicate records that are just file copies that probably should have got, never been held in the first place. But okay. Oh, uh, some of these are, are dash cam videos. Is that one? Yes. Yes. That we are required to hold for a certain amount of time, but then uh, they are able to be uh, disposed of. Yeah, they're, they're actually held for a period that's longer than what's required uh, by the police department, so. As is the case with a lot of our records. But then they get the video system automatically de deletes them, so this is uh, done so that uh, they can be reuse before them. they get deleted, okay. they have to get this record approved and when, it's required. When do they get deleted? Like, well, what's the, I mean, I, I forget the time. I'm asking the question. Off yeah, it, I think it's. I think they're re required to be kept for 30 days, and I think they're kept for like 180 or more, something like it that. It looks like most of these are, yeah, five or six months old. Yeah, I think 180 days is the longest period of time. Okay. So as okay. as it's going to become a rolling process. Uh, well, I don't know whether they're going to do it monthly or how often they'll submit these records for approval. So we will be. It's doing required this under the record periodically requirements. Yes. Okay. All right, is there a motion to approve resolution 2017-R14? Uh, so I'll move to approve that resolution. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Grove? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Next, we have the action on early uh, neutral evaluation agreement. Mark? This is uh, a requirement of the federal uh, court. Uh, this is in relative to a, uh, a lawsuit that the township's involved with. Uh, and the, the only reason it's on the agenda is because it's a requ we're required to, uh, we're committing the township to money. Uh, how much is, is, remains to be seen. Uh, the idea I'm assuming is here is to try to see if there is truly a case or not and yeah. try to work out some sort of arrangement so that. I mean, essentially the federal court requires both parties to a lawsuit to hire a third party to review the nature of the case and offer their, you know, their thoughts on it as, a, as an effort to try to resolve it early in, the, early in the, the time frame of the case. So the parties have to agree to pay this person that's retained their share of the costs. 
So because it's, it's an agreement that we have to enter into, uh, we have to approve entering into that agreement. And that is Attorney Frampton and... Yes, he's, that, uh, he's the... He was appointed? He's the person selected, yes. Okay. And the fee is 350 an hour? Yes. And we would pay half of that? Yes. Okay. Is there a motion regarding the early neutral evaluation agreement? Yeah, I so move to approve that agreement. Or second. I'll second. Mr. Grow? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. Next, we have a request for sale from the county repository. This is for 230 Kelso Drive. Yes, this is uh, index number 33-007-019.0-213.00230 Kelso Drive. Uh, the lot apparently is 51 by 0.41 by 93.73. The total taxes we're being asked to exonerate is $1,154.85. Uh, my guess is, looking at the pictures, there was actually something on this property back in the day uh, because the Yikes. taxes went from around $300 a year to like $100 a year. So there apparently was a structure on here at one point that no longer is there. And, uh, but now somebody wants to buy the, prop the, the parcel and, and uh, I'm assuming put a trailer on it. This is in a mobile home park? I don't know, not at 230. Uh, Kelso. Kelso, no, I don't think Unless they're going to do it. Well, I don't know. They don't say what they're, they it just says, I would like to have a place to live <coughs> or place a home on the property. Um, it doesn't specify whether they're building or, um, I, wouldn't, I don't know, it's not zoned for mobile homes and it's going to have to be a cottage. Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. Got a big hole to fill in. Yes. All right. Is there a motion in regard to the request um, for the, uh, well, what we're doing is exonerating the taxes? Yes. Okay. Is there a motion to that effect? Yeah, it's all moved to approve that agreement. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Grow? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. Next, we have a stormwater management maintenance agreement request. This is for Temple at Anched. Help you with that one. And she has said. said. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Mr. Morris. This project has been going down a very long <coughs> and windy road. And we're very happy that they've been able to get to this point. Stormwater management maintenance agreement is on the township approved form. The developer will own and maintain it. We recommend approval of the agreement. Okay, this frees the way for them to finally get a building permit. Yes. <coughs> okay, is there a motion to approve the stormwater maintenance agreement just for Temple and she has said? I just want to, well, what? I'm sorry. I just okay. want to clarify, we've had a discussion before, so this motion also <coughs> adopting the storm, stormwater, management, stormwater management plan as well, Mark? And yes. So this will be a motion to approve the plan and... As well as the maintenance agreement. As well as the maintenance agreement. All right, well, I, I make a motion to approve the plan and maintenance agreement. Is there a second? Yeah. Mr. Grove? Vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. Uh, do we have uh, any names for the property maintenance or zoning hearing board? Well, we have the names. We have to go through them. Okay. <coughs> so no action today? No action tonight, please. All right. <coughs> Communications. Uh, we have one from the police. Is that correct? I don't think so. I, yeah, drawn. I, I, no, yeah, I don't, there is none. Yeah, I don't think nothing from the police. Nothing okay. came in. All right. Uh, from Gary Snyder, our public works director, would like permission to send Mark Wells, Burt Mayo, Keith Lawson, and Matt Stevens to a continuing education class on securing drinking and wastewater facilities put on by the Pennsylvania Rural Water Association. This will be held at the Ambassador Center in Erie. The cost is $110 per person, and the monies have been budgeted. Uh, the class will be held April 25th. The hours will go towards uh, what they need to keep their sewer licenses by the DEP. I will move approval of uh, the cost of sending those employees to the, uh, the class of the, the Ambassador. Okay. I'll second that. Uh, Mr. Grout? I vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I vote yes. Um, we have um, 
a uh, note from Jessica James Stutzman in regard to, uh, uh, I guess this is in regard to Earth Day. This is a coloring contest being sponsored, co-sponsored by Lincoln Recycling and Mill Creek Township. This is uh, available for elementary schools K through five. And um, if you need additional information on the contest, you can contact Andrew Lincoln at Lincoln Recycling or at, uh, by calling Jessica Stutzman here at the Municipal Building and she can fill you in on the details of that uh, contest. Next we have a uh, training re request by Parks and Recreation. Uh, Ashley Marsteller would like permission to send Phil Falbo and Scott Bridger to attend a swimming pool recertification course in Cranberry on April 5th. 2017 the cost is $90 each for a total $180 they would need the use of a township vehicle to travel to the course um, and I would move approval of that request yeah, I'll second that. Uh, Mr. Grove I vote yes Mr. Morgan I vote yes and I vote yes uh, as far as executive sessions go we had one on March 16th from 9 a.m. to about 11 a.m. and another one um, today from 8.30 until about 10 o'clock. And since our student ambassador is not here, John, I think that you're done, right? Uh, or are you done? I have one other item. Uh, we received notice from the uh, uh, DCED that uh, our yes. grant application that we approved at the March 14th meeting and submitted on March the 17th was approved on March 23rd and is now ready for signature. So I uh, uh, am asking that uh, we sign the agreement, or have our solicitor review to make sure that there are no holes. Uh, you know, the, the grant agreement is in, in proper order. Yeah, if only we Penn sign that was as quick as DC, I guess. <laughs> you know, if they could come up with uh, the new legislation for the gaming money. <laughs> it's gotta be like a world record for <laughs> grant approval. Unbelievable. Great. A week. Yeah, well, less than must, must have been the grant writer. <laughs> well done, Mark. Yeah. Well, well done. Um, okay, so you need uh, probably to, to sign, uh, sign the agreement. agreement. Yes, pending Sub approval. Subject to my review. Okay. And approval. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Uh, that was not on the agenda. So public comment. Mr. Grove. I vote yes. Mr. Morgan. I vote yes. And I vote yes. Anything else, Mark? That's it. John? Well, I guess that um, for the benefit of, of the audience, uh, the grant uh, Mr. Zikszewski is referring to is we, we did apply for funding from the state uh, to help fund uh, an assessment of, of township operations as part of our comp plan, as part of our Embrace Mill Creek study that we, we'll be doing for the next year and a half. The uh, purpose of the grant will be for us to hire an outside consultant to assess uh, operational needs of the building. Uh, to look at how our departments are structured, to look at our staffing capacity, and, and also to assist Mark in preparing, uh, I believe it was a five-year financial plan for the township, uh, with the goal to identify exactly how, how much funding we will, will likely have available to actually implement the comp plan once it's completed, uh, and what kind of staffing capacities we may need to reach some of the objectives of the, of the comp plan. So it really is, it's, it's supplemental funding to help out uh, our comprehensive plan effort. Thank you. I believe it's up to $50,000 is the award, correct? Mark? Yes. 50000 yes. Well, and, and the great thing about this study as well, I mean, I guess I'll add on a little bit. Um, with, with, when we applied for this program and, and were selected, once this study is completed, uh, we'll actually be eligible for further state grants towards implementation. Other municipalities who have pursued um, this funding source in the state uh, later use their study to get state funding for software upgrades, uh, co uh, computer purchases, and other kinds of equipment upgrades for the municipality. So it really is a, it was a, a, a great effort by, by Mark to submit the, uh, the application, and I think it's, we're going to reap some, some great rewards uh, from this project. Okay, thank you. Attorney Shaw? Yeah, I, I have two things uh, quick. Last meeting that I mentioned about uh, receiving a communication from PNC Bank regarding a parcel in which they were seeking to foreclose. Um, they had originally approached us about subdividing out um, another piece of that parcel that had been added to 
the original property they had mortgaged. Um, it, but if they did that, it would violate the 50-foot uh, frontage requirements uh, of our ordinance. And both the planning department and myself had indicated to them that we would not uh, recommend that uh, to the board. Um, as a result, he uh, sent me a letter requesting that um, we write a letter to PNC advising that um, uh, that that is the case, that the township would not, you know, approve that subdivision uh, that would leave a, you know, essentially a 40-foot parcel in a, in a residential neighborhood that, that ultimately wouldn't get developed. Uh, so I would recommend that, that I proceed to write that letter to PNC advising that neither I nor the planning department would recommend such a subdivision uh, in this instance that it violates the township code and would likely leave an undevelopable parcel in the neighborhood. Uh, and I would ask that the supervisors specifically approve that I send that letter. Uh, obviously, it would be premature for the supervisors to render a decision as to whether they would approve a subdivision or not, but I think it's appropriate to send them a letter saying we wouldn't recommend it. It violates our ordinance. Correct. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to that effect? I, I, I'd move that, but I, I don't mean to be hyper-technical, but with the, the department, probably the engineering department, or the land development coordinator. We don't, we don't actually have a planning department in the okay. township. Just to, I just call them planning, but you're right. Just want to clarify, I'd be the engineering <laughs> okay. department. Well, if we have some kind of legal thing, we'll make sure we indicate the right department. Yep, I would so have I, the right entities. I would uh, make a motion to authorize you to do so. Do you have a second? Second. Uh, public comment? Mr. Groh? Vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. I vote yes. And the second item I have was uh, we had sent a letter to Velocity Net. Uh, in response to an inquiry that we had received uh, and a television or a news report that indicated they were providing television service uh, in, in the township through their, um, for lack of a better term, their cable system. Um, and we had asked them whether in fact they may be covered by our, our, the franchise uh, provision of our, of our code. Um, I received a response back from VelocityNet indicating that they did not believe they were covered by that and they provided me with an agreement that they actually entered into with Harbor Creek for their for what they believe they have um, and um, indicated a willingness to enter into that type of agreement with the township. Um, the township historically has relied on the Cohen Law Group in Pittsburgh to deal with these types of issues with respect to the cable and franchising. Uh, and I'd like to be able to reach out to them to get to you know get their opinion on the issue presented by Velocity and that it's kind of outside of my bailiwick and not something that we typically deal with, and it's a fairly particularized area of the law, so I would like to be able to reach out to them, and uh, I guess I would, I would request that uh, I get authorized to, to reach out and, and uh, retain them to take a look at this at a, initially maybe a not to exceed number of, say, 2,500 bucks, and if it's gonna be more, then I can come back to the supervisors, but I'm not sure it'll take that long. Um, and Cohen is the group that, uh Develop the they most did the time franchise yes. agreement. Correct. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? Well, my, my, my only concern is what the hourly rate is for the Cohen Group, and whether we have that on record, if we have funds in, in legal budget to, to cover those costs. Or I, I think they're. Um, if you're happy to give us a pro bono hours to <laughs> cover that cost, that's fine too. I, I think our our budget is such that it allows some flexibility for you know, to reach out and, and retain those types of folks. And like I said, I would initially propose it not to exceed numbers so that, you know, we have some control over what it, what it may be, or get, just to get a sense of what we're getting into. And it may be much to do about nothing, I don't know. Does the Harbor Creek Agreement generate a franchise fee? Yes, yes. The concern here is that our current agreement with Time Warner has a favored nations clause in it, so that if it would turn out the velocity net would have a uh, would be viewed as a cable system. Um, you know, Time Warner may be able to make, you know, an argument that somehow, you know, we would, you know, th their agreement would be impacted by the fact that VelocityNet is providing okay. that service without an agreement. So we want to make sure that that gets covered. All right. Uh, is there a motion? Contacting the Cohen Group. All right. Is there a second? Uh, well, I'd like to amend the motion to put a, a max dollar amount for now. Oh, you mentioned the uh, not to exceed number? 2,500, yes. Okay. All right. You think that's uh, reasonable? And to at least, at least get a, a feel and a sense of what the issue may be, right. and then go from there. All right. 
2500? Yes, that's okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Uh, Mr. Oh, uh, citizen, or public comment. Mr. Grove. I vote yes. Mr. Morgan. I vote yes. I vote yes. Anything else, Mark? That's all I have. Cheryl? Mr. Morris? Citizens to be heard. Citizens to be heard. If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn at 825. So moved. We are adjourned. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.